Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, May 2nd, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court abortion access, and a leaked draft opinion that Politico obtained just about 20 to 30 minutes ago. Now, when this came across my screen, I was absolutely flabbergasted. On one hand, I expected the Supreme Court to make such a decision. On the other hand, I really didn't think they would make such, uh, in, in, in all sense of political terms, a dumb decision right before the midterm elections. We're going to be talking about the implications of what this leaked draft opinion actually tells us, what they have actually written in the Supreme Court case. And yes, the title is correct. The court is poised to overturn Roe v. Wade and uphold some laws that otherwise might be struck down under a different composition of the United States Supreme Court. So let's get started. This has been a topic that I think we have really been beating around the bush when we come down to the midterm elections. We've been talking about inflation. We've been talking about the economy. We've been talking about COVID-19, but nothing I would say will trounce that except for abortion access. And that's exactly what this new draft opinion seems to be limiting. The Supreme Court of the United States is a court that is composed of nine main members. We all know this. But recently, the Supreme Court has become into a position where there is a six to three conservative majority. Of course, with this majority, states have passed abortion bans. Oklahoma passes a full and total ban of abortion across the state. Mississippi bans abortions after 15 to 16 weeks. What you're finding here is that courts are bringing up things that otherwise would have been struck down besides, you know, a couple of specific things that were brought up now in this new court that the decision now will overturn precedent from 1973. And if you want to actually get into the text of this, and I probably sound very frantic talking about this video simply because this is news to me. I had a Senate election prediction that I had ready to go. I have the thumbnail created and everything. I was going to release it right now before I head over to my uh, end of my freshman year formal tonight. But I actually just took off my suit. I took off everything. And I am now recording this video because it is such a major thing. I think I've never seen any uh, anything just as significant as this besides maybe Biden's election and the midterm elections that I covered on my channel. This is insane news. And it seems to be a very, very big leak. So Justice Alito, he is the run writing this uh, Supreme Court case. He's writing the uh, decision here. And they talk about the uh, abortion uh, and access to it. It says abortion presents a profound moral issue in which Americans hold sharply conflicting views. Some believe fervently that a human person comes into being at conception and that abortion ends an innocent life. Others feel that strongly that any regulation of abortion invades a woman's right to control her own body and prevents women from achieving full equality. So what you're finding here is that abortion is being heavily discussed as it always is. And it talks about the laws that are in here and the laws that were in place back when Roe v. Wade ultimately was decided. But here's what ended up happening. So you go ahead and scroll down and they talk about Roe v. Wade. And it says explicitly in this initial draft, we hold that Roe v. Roe and Casey must be overruled. This is a huge blow to Planned Parenthood, to uh, abortion uh, clinics, you know, a lot of different people across the nation that offer this service to women. And regardless of how you view it, what you are finding is that now a significant chunk of that will be removed. A significant portion of our nation is no longer going to have access to abortion. And if you think that's okay, and if you don't think that's okay, obviously people are going to react to different things. But this is a decision that has not been made, and it's something that has not been in effect, truly in effect, across potentially up to 30 states now, since 1973. So, as we go through this, I want you to pretty much take in exactly what's going to come out in the news tomorrow. This is a Politico exclusive. When I tell you they published this literally minutes ago, it is 9.11 p.m. right now. This was published at 8.32 p.m. This came out a leak. They've mentioned that there has never been a time in recent history where there has been a leak of an opinion this early on. The initial draft majority opinion says Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak, and the decision has had damaging consequences. Consequences, And far from bringing about a national sentiment on the abortion issue, Roe and Casey have inflamed debate and deepened division. It's criticizing the decision that was made, and thus ushering in a new one, and setting a new precedent, a 49-year-old precedent. It looks as if, as Politico states, the court is going to reject Roe's logic and legal protections. This is a draft opinion. It says it was released with someone familiar to the court's proceedings. This draft opinion is 98 pages long. You don't get things like this easily. 
This is quite literally a brand new decision. No draft in modern history has been disclosed publicly while a case was still pending. This unprecedented revelation is bound to intensify the debate over what was already the most controversial case on the docket this term. The Supreme Court has done what many Democrats thought was unthinkable. So now let's talk about what the political implications are of this, because obviously there are going to be a lot of political implications. First things, speed run. Six in 10 Americans say abortion should be legal in all or more, most cases. Think about this for a moment. 60% of the nation on one issue is on one side. When does that happen? Nowhere else. Abortion is one of the few issues where you start to see the American public taking such a significant stance on a specific issue. You also see this not only with Pew Research, you also see this with a CNN poll that shows the majority of Americans oppose overturning the Roe v. Wade decision. 69% oppose it, a finding that's consistent with both polling and other historical trends. It shows that the support for over overturning Roe v. Wade has only fluctuated between 20 and 31%. That tells you that less than a third of the nation thinks that this decision should be overturned, and that's exactly what this court is going to do. In addition to that, there are questions, what happens next? Well, here's what happens next. Things start to become a lot more restrictive. Not only do they become a lot more restrictive, they become a lot more prohibitive. Restrictive is one thing. Allowing it in some sense is one thing. But prohibiting it entirely is exactly what states such as Oklahoma and other states that already have built-in provisions such as Michigan, that as soon as Roe v. Wade is overturned, it's a switch. And all of a sudden, abortion is completely banned across the state. And I can tell you that many red states are going to use copycat methods and replicate bills to ban abortion access across the United States. And what that's going to do is enraged that 70% of the country that doesn't want to overturn Roe v. Wade, that 60% of the nation that says abortion should be legal in all or most cases. I'm sure that 10% extra here is all for precedent and not necessarily for abortion. But the point being that 6 in 10 Americans are pro-choice when Joe Biden only won 52% of the vote in the last election. When you see that 52% margin or even just 51%, it tells you that there are Republicans, there are independents that side and say that abortion access should be allowed. The Republican Party has been defeating the Democratic Party on every major issue so far, with few exceptions. They have been beating the Democrats on the issue of the economy. They have been beating the Democratic Party on the issue of immigration. In some cases, beating them on the issue of COVID-19. One thing that they cannot beat them on, and I said this, I think even yesterday or even today, talking about the Republican Party and their inability to win over the lead, things that they can't beat the Democratic Party on, one main, main thing is abortion, a woman's right to choose. You cannot tell the nation to become pro-life because they won't, because the nation isn't majority pro-life. That's why, and I mentioned this yesterday in my video, uh, you know, coincidentally, why the Democratic Party, sorry, why the Republican Party does not campaign on that pro-life stance as much as they used to, because it simply isn't this uh, huge decision that people are ultimately making left and right. People have positions on it, but it's not one that can be swayed heavily. That's why if you take a look at polls, not once have those who thought it should be illegal in all or most cases overcame those who believe that it should be legal in all or most cases. So now that we head into the midterm elections in this position, I can tell you now that this decision is going to shake it up. If anything was to shake up the midterm elections and potentially change the trajectory of the race, it would be overturning Roe v. Wade. New stories are going to be capturing this tomorrow. They are going to be publicizing this. You are going to see CNN, MSNBC, NBC all over this for good reason, because this is such a significant decision. At the end of the day, the Republican Party being up 2.4% could turn into the Democratic Party being up by five in just a month. And that only thing that could actually do this is this decision. Now, the Supreme Court hasn't officially released this decision yet, but we have never come to a point where we have seen an initial majority draft circulated. I don't know who in the clerkship or who in the Supreme Court decided to leak this, but thankfully they did because it gives us insight as to what we can expect this summer. I'm not necessarily super big on a nine-person Supreme Court making decisions for the entire nation, not necessarily as an institution, but obviously I think there should be way more political and legal minds, and even just people who have some type of stake in this, having some sense of uh, communication and having some sense of having their voice heard and decisions made uh, within the Supreme Court. But I do think that this really just shows how out of touch the Supreme Court is and why that hurts the Republican Party. 
because they appointed six out of the nine justices in this position. 67% of the justices on the Supreme Court came from the GOP, and that means that this decision falls in their hands. This is huge news. I, I really am still flabbergasted that we are in this position where we now have a draft opinion leaked. This is crazy to me that we are in a position where the Supreme Court has a leaked decision out there. I can't even believe that that is possible. But my main takeaway that I want you to take from this is that it looks very, very likely unless this leak somehow changes the decision that has been made by the Supreme Court, that the Supreme Court is poised to overturn Roe v. Wade and break the precedent from 1973, a 49-year-long precedent. They are doing so against the wishes of clearly the American public, against the wishes of everyone you ask when it comes down to national and statewide polling data. What we are finding is that the Supreme Court's ruling on Roe v. Wade is going to completely change what we talk about for the midterms. No longer is it going to be education, or it might be, but in conjunction with abortion access. We're going to be talking about maybe the economy and abortion, right? What we're going to be talking about here is a lot of this and a lot less of what has been bringing down the Democratic Party thus far. To reiterate, the main thing that the Democratic Party knows they can win against the GOP is Roe v. Wade. They can inspire a base that otherwise would not be inspired to turn out. There is a reason why the Democratic Party is not doing well in opinion polling data, because Democrats are not inspired to turn out, and they don't necessarily like the job that Joe Biden is doing. But if he comes in and appeals to that 60 to 70 percent of the nation and says, I will ensure that we at least try to pass some forms of legislation nationwide to keep abortion access or try to uh, sort of put it into the law so that way the court has to make another decision on it, or potentially that electing Democrats in states such as Michigan in the governor's race or Wisconsin in the governor's race or Pennsylvania will ensure that bills such as this don't get passed or signed into law in some of these bigger states, what we are finding is that the Democratic Party could use this to their advantage. As much as it sucks, I would say, for those who are on one side of this argument in favor of abortion access, that this even is an issue that has become politicized. I'm sure the other side feels the exact same way. But the Democratic Party will see this not necessarily in a, a, a malicious sense as an opportunity, but an opportunity to revitalize a base that otherwise would not be inspired to turn out. 60 to 70% of the nation is on one side for an issue. You rarely ever see that. Our nation is so polarized that even mask mandates and COVID-19 restrictions or even vaccines have become even to this point, we're not even 60% of the nation is on one side about a vaccine, about booster shots. 70% is a pipe dream for scientists across the nation. You are finding that the nation is unwilling to move to one side about one specific issue. But abortion access is one of those issues where you actually see the exception of the rule come through. And I'm telling you now, mark my words, this issue is going to be a lot bigger if the Supreme Court follows through with such a decision. <clears throat> Sorry, I had something in my throat. This exclusive by Politico is breaking, breaking news. I mean, you're talking about something that we never really expected to come out ever. Like they said, in recent history, you never see a decision leaked this early. Remember that number, 59% of Americans, 70% of Americans on one side, not in favor of the GOP. It seems like it is a partisan issue because all Republicans elected have to say they are pro-life because otherwise they wouldn't win a primary. But when it comes down to the rest of the nation, there are plenty of pro-choice Republicans, pro-choice independents. But this specific situation where a Republican court, appointed by a Republican court, leads to a point where Roe v. Wade is overturned, you will find outrage, not just from the Democratic Party side because you've already seen it in many states where you have Republicans and independents and, of course, Democrats calling on state legislatures to overturn their decisions or change the laws or, you know, trying to field candidates to overturn such laws. But looking at what this court's decision is going to be, it looks like it's going to return to the states. And it's going to be a very, very bad thing for many uh, activists on one side of the aisle when it comes down to abortion access. But I also think it could be very, very bad for the GOP 
as this continues on, especially as this news circulates throughout the summer and gives Democrats more ammunition for the midterm elections. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.